What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to the next question. So we are given this triangle, it has vertices at A, two and one, B at one and eight, and then C at eight and nine. And a couple of different questions dealing with this triangle. We have to verify that this is a right triangle or that it contains an angle of 90 degrees. Part B, we have to find the midpoint of the hypotenuse. And then part C, we have to verify the distance from the midpoint to all three vertices is equal. And so this is actually a property of all right triangles that we're gonna show here. So just in general, if you have a right triangle, so a triangle that looks like this, if you find the midpoint on the hypotenuse, the distance from that midpoint to all three vertices is going to be equal. To these two vertices, it's obvious because this is the midpoint, right? So obviously this side or this distance and this distance are going to be the same because it cuts this side in half. But it's also going to be equal uh, to this distance over here to that third vertice, right? So all three of these are gonna be the same for any right triangle, and we're gonna show it with this specific one. Now, in part A, we have to verify that this is a right triangle, and as we've shown in a previous video, there's multiple ways to do this. One way is we can find the slopes of all three sides, and if there are two sides where their slopes are negative reciprocals of one another, well, then we know they're perpendicular to each other and so we know that there's gonna be an angle of 90 degrees between them. Okay, so that's one way, finding all the slopes. Another way is you can find all the lengths of all the sides, and then you can just confirm that the Pythagoras theorem holds. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, where C is gonna be that hypotenuse. So we can go about it either way. Maybe your teacher will require one of those methods, right? Maybe you won't have a choice. In this specific example, because we're going to be dealing with the length formula in part C, when we're finding the distance from that midpoint to all three vertices, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the slope formula for all three sides in part A, just to kind of mix up the calculations we're going to be doing, right? So Let's, uh, let's start off with finding the slopes of all the sides. So we got A, B, and C. I'm not gonna draw the triangle yet because we don't know which side is gonna be the hypotenuse, but we will after part A. So let's first start off with finding the slope of A, B. Right, so let's label these. So let's label this uh, X1, Y1, and then B I'll label X2 y2 to start with. Now the slope formula, just in general, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we're going to have, what, 8y2 minus y1, which is 1, and then x2, which is 1, minus x1, which is 2. So we'd end up with uh, 7 over negative 1, which gives us negative 7. So that's the slope of AB. Let's find the slope of side BC now. Uh, since B is already labeled X2, Y2, let's label C, X1, Y1. So we'll have Y2 minus Y1. So we'll have eight minus nine over one minus eight which would give us what? Negative one over negative seven, which would give us positive one over seven. And actually at this point, notice that these are the two sides that are perpendicular. These are negative reciprocals of one another. But let's just find the, um, the third slope as well. So that would be of AC. Both are labeled X1, Y1, so I'm gonna label this one instead as X2, Y2. So we'll have y2, 9, minus 1, over x2, which is 8, minus x1, which is 2. So we'd end up with what? Uh, 8 over 6, which would give us 4 over 3, like that. Right, so that's going to be the slope of AC. So again, notice that this and this 
these are negative reciprocals of one another, right? Negative seven is like negative seven over one. If we flip it, change the sign, we would end up with positive one over seven. So just with those two calculations there, we verified that this is a right triangle. Now, if we were to graph these uh, points, so let's do a quick rough sketch here. So let's start with A. So we got two and one. So let's say that's like over here. And then we'll have one and eight. That's going to be like up here. And then we'll have eight and nine. If this is at eight, then the y value of nine would be like over here. So we got A and then we got B and then we got C like that. So we end up with this. We end up with that, and we end up with that right there. All right, so, and in the drawing, this makes sense. These slopes make sense. Notice that this is negative seven, so it's a very negative steep slope, right? As we see over here, that's negative seven. That's the slope, not the length. So this here is the slope of AB. It's negative seven. And then we got the slope of BC, which is one over seven. So it's a positive slope, but not too steep, right? This is not too big of a number. So this slope here of BC is uh, one over seven. And then the slope of AC, we got to be four over three. Notice that that is positive. All right, so even with the diagram, it's making sense. Notice how this here is gonna be the right angle, right? Because these two slopes are perpendicular. All right, so we verified in part A that it's a right triangle with these two calculations. We didn't even have to make the diagram, but decided to make it anyway, just so we could have something to refer to. Now let's move on to part B. Now in part B, what we got to do is we got to find the midpoint of the hypotenuse. Now from here, we could tell the hypotenuse, the longest side or the side opposite to the 90 degrees is the side AC. Right, so in part A, we have to figure out first which side is the hypotenuse. We couldn't just jump to part B right away. But with those calculations, with this diagram, we could tell that AC is the hypotenuse. And so we got to find this midpoint over here. Now, A has a point of 2 and 1. C has a point of 8 and 9. So they're already labeled here, x2, y2, x1, y1. So the midpoint of AC is going to be, the midpoint formula is what? It's X1 plus X2 divided by two, Y1 plus Y2 divided by two. So it's going to be X1, which is two, plus X2, which is eight divided by two. And then we'll have Y1, which is one, plus Y2, which is nine. And we're gonna divide that by two. And notice actually for both of these, we'll get 10 in the numerators, divide that by two, we end up with five. So we'll have five and five. So this coordinate here, it's actually five and five right there. That's the midpoint of the hypotenuse. So that's the answer to uh, part B. And now in part C, what we gotta do is we gotta find the distance. We're gonna find three distances from this point, from this midpoint, to this vertice, so we're gonna find this distance, then we're gonna find this distance, and then we're gonna find this distance, and then all three of those distances should equal. So just as a quick review, what is the distance formula or the length of a line segment formula if you have two endpoints? Well, the distance between those two endpoints is going to be the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, like that. All right, so let's start off, let's first maybe label this point, I'll call it uh, m for the midpoint. So let's first find the distance between a and m. So what's that gonna be? Well, let's label these. So let's let this be x1, y1. I'll let this be x2, y2. So we would have x2, which is five, minus x1, which is two. 
that's going to be squared plus y2, which is 5, minus y1, which is 1, and then that's going to be squared like that. So we would end up with 5 minus 2, which is 3, and then 5 minus 1, which is 4. And both of those are going to be squared, so we would have 9 plus 16, square root of 25, which would give us 5. Right, so that's the length, that's the distance between these two points over here. So let's uh, keep track of these on the side. So the distance between A and M is five. Now let's find the distance between, um, let's do uh, C and M. Let's work with those two lengths on the hypotenuse first. So this is already X2, Y2, I'm gonna label this X1, Y1. Again, it doesn't matter, you could switch these as well, but I'm just gonna leave it like that. So we would have X2, which is five, minus X1, which is eight. That's gonna be squared plus Y2, five minus Y1, which is nine. That's gonna be squared. So we would end up with negative three squared plus negative four squared. So exactly the same as we had before. This would end up being 9 plus 16, 25, root 25 gives us 5. All right, so CM has a length of 5 as well. And those are expected, right, because if we found the correct midpoint, then the distance between the midpoint and the two endpoints should be the same. The real question is, what about from the midpoint to B? This one is not as obvious. Now, B has a coordinate of 1 and 8. We already have x2, y2 here. I'll label this x1, y1. Let's see if this works out, if the distance between b, m is 5 as well. So we would have the square root of x2, which is 5, minus x1, which is 1. That's going to be squared, plus y2, which is 5, minus y1, which is 8. That's going to be squared and notice we would end up with four squared plus negative three squared, which again would give us 16 plus uh, nine, which would give us 25. Square root of 25 is five. So the distance between B, point B, vertice B, and this midpoint M is also five. Right, so we verified that the midpoint, the distance from the midpoint on a right triangle on the hypotenuse, the midpoint of the hypotenuse, the distance from that midpoint to all three vertices is the same. And no matter what right triangle you draw, it's always going to 